Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi. Amazing to meet you. Love this. Love the uh, series. And um, this is my first time actually experiencing the series when they gave me the trailer. So um, as I was watching it, I'm I know that we're in the age of babies raising babies. And so we have here um, a family who is being raised by a mother who uh, experienced hardships at, at a young age and experienced things and, and bringing up young children and, and um, putting those ex experiences into their lives. When you saw the script, how did you receive it and think about it like, oh, this is gonna be like a real life. This is how my mama talks to me kind of show. I would say we all felt that way when we read the script. I, we've had this conversation, the four of us, hearing Pat's voice just on the page before ever meeting her. I was like, I know this woman. Like this woman is either my mom or a variation of my mom or a variation of my aunt, et cetera. So it was exciting to see that that person was going to be the centerpiece of a black, you know, sitcom. And we were going to tell a story that looked like that. And that felt so relatable. So I was excited. Yeah, I was extremely excited when I first read the script. It was, it just felt, it felt real. And in a long time, it was one of those scripts that I got that I really felt like that I could really relate to it. Mm -hmm. And when, and before we even started filming, um, I was saying to myself, I said, when this, when this hits and when people see it, it's really going to make a, a huge impact because it, it really does show what a black household really moves and feels and looks like with all the Trump black traumas and the, and the different problems that we have that every family, not just black, but every family has in their household. But then we also get to display it in a very real authentic way. Um, okay. That's, that's what it did for me when I first read that script. How satisfied were you with the writer's room as they address some of the different issues, you know, be, between the transgender issues and racism and things like that. How did, how did that feel as it translated onto the page for you? For me, it, I was just, I was just glad that they were willing to go there uh -huh. with it. Um, I, I, I watch a lot of TV. I don't know what, what's a lot that's out now, but I, I haven't, I haven't really seen that in a sitcom before to tackle the, the issues that we're tackling the, um, today. And for them to even go there and, 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 and want to have those type of conversations and really, and, and do it in a way where it's not too preachy, right? but also have a, a nice comedic twist to it. So when we when we spoon fed it to you, it's not so harsh. It's not too harsh, but it's also not too much on the jokey side of it where you can't take it serious. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just a relief that we can actually tell these stories and and really touch some people out there so they can feel like they they're they're seen. Um, and that's that's what it did for me. And I was just honored to be able to play a character and and to be in this uh, show to be able to tell that story. Okay. Brianna and Theodore weigh in here as the younger uh, people on the on the crew. How do you feel about um, the reality that's been delivered, even though it's through comedy? This is some some real real stuff, real life stuff. How do you take it as the younger people? How do you see it? Yeah, like Ben said, just to see it, <clears throat> just to see it expressed in a different way, you know. And that was just on paper. You know, that was before we got to to, you know, go to the studio and play with it and add and take away. So just to see, you know, the route that, you know, Jordan and Pat and, you know, the whole writer's room took with that. And these are, you know, this is rough. This is a rough cut. But, you know, when when our Monday comes and our Tuesday comes you know, we're all working on it at that point, you know, and that even that, you know, is a blessing, you know, they allow our input so much yeah. and it's, it's awesome to me. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. For me, I would say, I see, uh, I felt, I felt seen reading the script. Um, and like they were saying, before you even touch the floor to really rehearse it and block it, just reading the dialogue and seeing the conversations that they 
they aren't afraid to go for and to have and to put it in a sitcom form. But going back to what Vince said, but also have that comedy. So it's not too harsh, but you're also getting a lesson out of it. And it's hilarious. I haven't seen many things like that. So for me, it was I was proud to be on this kind of project. But two, I did feel seen because a lot of times these are conversations that I'm having with my friends or I'm having with my mom. She talks to me in this kind of way or, you know, I'm seeing on TV and I feel some type of way about it. And I know that people at home are having these conversations in their living room. So it's nice to see it on TV because, you know, art imitates life. So it should it should be there. We shouldn't be afraid to talk about it. So it's just great to really explore that. Was there any one particular situation um, that struck you like, I really lived that or I watched my friends live that. And now we're talking about it. Um, Well, specifically the pilot about the school shooting that um, that for me was it was very odd because I hadn't really seen that anywhere. And I was I was experiencing it and it was all over the news. You know, it's it's Mm -hmm. happening now. And so to see a script about that and to have those conversations, conversations with your parent about, you know, I'm. I'm afraid to go to school. Like I, I, I can't even focus on learning because I'm worried, will I come back home to you? You know, and that's real. While on top of that, moving to a new town, I've done that too. I'm a nomad. So I've moved all over, all over the place, you know, and being able to um, see a script that specifically talked about things like that, that I was going through and having conversations with my mom was really nice to see and obviously really relatable. Okay. What's the biggest takeaway that we, um, should have from this series and the importance? Mm, I would say just continue like growth and healing between uh, family, you know, family members um, and that you can laugh through your pain that I feel like that's Miss Pat, like as a woman, that's her mission in, in her comedy and definitely in the storytelling on the show that if you can laugh at it, it doesn't have power over you. That's what she always says. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we definitely embody in the show. We're we're giving you lessons. We're giving you, uh, you know, messages, but we're always finding a way to make it funny, always finding a way to make it relatable, always, you know, finding a way for you to be able to take it on uh, with some ease and some joy in your heart. And so that's that's what I think the show brings. I think that's what it represents. Okay. All right. Thank you, Brittany, Vince, Brianna, Theodore, Miss Pat is the show and it's an amazing series. Congratulations on the second season and the Emmy nomination as well. Thank Thank you. you. Good afternoon. Hey, how you doing? Amazing. I'm amazing. I'm always amazing. You know, Uh, thank you for being uh, with us. And I'm happy to get an opportunity to speak with you. This is an amazing series and uh, very powerful even though it's comedic, the things that you guys touch on are some true to life issues that we're dealing with today. How did you feel when you first saw the script, Tammy? Can I start with you, ladies first? Um, and and saw the 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 role that you would be playing and how the situation would be presented. To answer that, I'd have to try to remember all the scripts because each week there's always a surprise (laughs) in terms of which um, social topic that we're going to tackle because we try to be topical with with everything that we do in in all the episodes. Um, But listen, we're here to bring those words to life, to take those pages and make them the best that we can be. As it pertains to Denise, she's just like anybody else out there, searching, trying to find herself, trying to live the best life that she can live, be the best person that she can be. And that was what I brought to the table, just an understanding of that and not being held hostage by the things that this character has gone through in the past. Right trying to grow and evolve. That's that's what Pat wanted to do with this character who's based on her real sister, right. not living in the moment where she was downtrodden, but how can we evolve Denise and make her somebody that people will understand and that can resonate with the audience that has to view it. Okay, I think it's beautiful. Jay Thank Bernard you. and your first take. Uh, listen, uh, like like Tammy said, the first take is 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 uh, 
kind of impossible to even remember, mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. honest with you. But the thing that I try to do uh, for Terry, according to the story, is, you know, not try to be perfect. You know, you know, it's, it's, this character is flawed. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the beautiful part about it and because it gives you a, a natural idea of being in, in the, the human condition that we all live in every day. And I try to represent the goodness of that uh, for our men, you know, knowing that, hey, we are the providers, we hold down the fort, we are the rocks and the foundation. Sometimes these things don't go the way we want to go. So we have to let go and let live and come back to it and rebuild, knowing that it's not about losing, it's about uh, 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 either you, you win or you learn, you know, right. so grow from that you know what I'm saying that foundation and you know to let the audience in on that to understand that hey listen all everybody that looks like me you know is not this intimidating feared person to be uh, looked upon in society but that, that that I'm a human being and I got feelings and I'm unique and I have a, a wife I have a sister I have these kids everybody to take care of and they are taking care of me also and allow that to happen and I think I think that is reflective upon the script that's given to us, the words that we take off the kit, the page and breathe life into. And hopefully, hopefully that testimony of Terry touches somebody and gets them to just think about life in a different way and to make different scenarios work and understanding what that is for their given scenario. All our scenarios are different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, the way that Tammy got to where she is in her life and the way I got there are two different ways. But you know, we kind of have that same goal, but it, it, we all go different ways to get there. Allow that to happen and respect that. I think what I enjoyed the most is, is the interaction, like you said, between the family, the give and take and representation of a strong male who is at the same time sensitive enough to give and listen and support and be supportive and not just demanding and self-centered. That's right. That's you right. know, I think that was pretty amazing. And I have an Aunt Denise and she's an amazing human being through her struggles. And there's always been a triumph for her. And she's like one of the most amazing people that I I mean, when we're talking about earlier, I asked the, the youngsters about we're in, we're we're in a, a society that we're, it's increasingly babies raising babies. How do you present this message to sometimes a really hard headed audience? Be responsible. Understand that the actions that you take in any given circumstances is going to affect not only yourself, but those around you. So be accountable and responsible for those actions. You know, and I think a lot of times with this generation, and I'm not saying, you know, that that all of them are like, all the kids or the millennials are like this, but they have to understand that everything ain't going to be given to them. It's not about immediate gratification. You know, what you see us do on TV weekly there's a lot of work that went into that final product that got there, all right? And it, it, it gives you a much more appreciation for the work versus something being given to you. So know that you have to work for something that you really love and what you really want and that you're passionate about. And everything else will fall into place. Even though it's entertainment, I see that the messages um, are getting out that this is not a microwave life. You don't put it in for 30 seconds and it's done. And it's you know a whole meal. Um, you really have to do some work and, and prepare. And I think Aunt Denise, for me, um, really personifies the hard work that it takes to, first of all, meet yourself again. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, do the work to be the best that you can and present and share what you have. Um, and what's your take on that, Tim? I, I would agree with you. And I think uh, part of each person's journey in real life is that you will reintroduce yourself to others and to yourself a hundred times. Because the whole objective about life, I think, is that you are supposed to be consistently evolving. If I'm talking to you in 20, 2020, 
right? And you the same person doing the same thing in 2022, <laughs> then I'm stopping communication with you <laughs> because you, you know, I'm about upwardly mobile movement. And so you were absolutely right. That's what Denise is, her character personifies, right? Is you're going to see yourself going through challenges. You're going to see yourself fall down, but how are you getting back up? And once you get back up, are you taking steps or are you standing still? Hmm. And Denise is trying to be on a path that takes her somewhere. She doesn't know where. Now she <laughs> she doesn't have enough, you know, insight to know where she's going, but she knows she wants to go somewhere. And that's half the battle. Perfect. Tammy, J. Bernard, thank you very much for your time. Wishing you much continued success. I love the series and I'm looking forward to season two. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Miss Pat Jordan, how are you? Just fine. How are you doing? I'm amazing. Can't cry, can't complain. Nobody listens to me anyway. So <laughs> yeah. I wanted to say, first of all, thank you very much for having this show and creating this show. It takes a lot of intestinal fortitude, Miss Pat, to strip away the layers and bring your life to the screen and share it with an audience of millions. Um, what was that defining moment that made you take that leap? It was Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It took somebody to pull them stories out of me. <laughs> it was just, you know, I'm 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 so much I'm 50. He was he was in his early 20s and just trusting him with it because they were such delicate moments in my life. And you know, it was things I had put on a shelf and I didn't want to talk about them, but I talked about the stories with him and he wanted to create episodes. So in the beginning, I kind of thought he was crazy. Mm. And I thought it wouldn't work because I wasn't a typical sitcom mom. But I, when I let go and trust him, I started to heal. So now I can't wait to tell him a story. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, what was it that that touched her about you that made her made you want to pull those together and make it into a cohesive series that you could present to the world? Yeah, I I think that she she saw that I. I wanted to do something different that I, I wanted to do something that that hadn't been done. And also, I think she trusted me because there was a there was a sense of 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 seeing me and seeing that there needed to be a sense of protection. And it's like, oh, you she always says the story. It's like you have so many dreams. You think so big. You dream so big. And I don't want anybody to shoot down those dreams. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to tell you no. I don't want anybody to tell you that 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 what you're dreaming <laughs> is wrong. And I think that she just leaned into that, even when it sounded crazy. When I was like, I want you, I want to do an already sitcom, and I want you to curse, and I want you. She's like, ain't nobody gonna let me say nigga on TV. <laughs> 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 it was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And so so ever since then, we just jumped in and we've been in it ever since. Was there initially any pushback from the networks um, as you presented that idea about being uncloaked as Black people? You know what I mean? And, yeah. and just giving it to them like it is. Yeah, Hulu dropped us. <laughs> <laughs> No shame to Hulu, you know, uh, and that's what I told Jordan, you know, um, sometimes you don't fit everybody, you know, puzzle. So, and I, and I remember when we had to go over to um, BET picked us up and I had never heard of BET Plus. Well, BET Plus picked us and I never heard of BET Plus. And I told him, I said, I'm from the streets. And one thing I know is how to set up a trap. This ain't nothing but a drug gang. I'm with the dealers and we're going to get the crack out and everybody's going to come. Right. You just got to believe in it. You know, I wasn't scared to go over to a new new network. I, it was something different. It was just, I just had to work harder, you know, because what we was at before, it was already developed. It was already big. Everybody knew about it. Everybody was waiting on it. So it's just about tr trusting yourself, believing yeah. in yourself and sticking together. You know, one yeah. thing I've always told him when I first met him, because the age difference is so, I'm so much older than him. I said, we're never going to let money drive us. We're going right. to let talent and what yeah. we love to do drive us. You're going to get the money regardless. And we're never going to let anybody break this bond that we have. We're going to walk away as friends and family the way we came into this thing. Mm. It's it's a huge dynamic to see the age difference working so well together. <laughs> Mentally putting out a product that is as impactful as you are coming from two different worlds of experience 
and being able to, to put them together and deliver a product. I'm just going, my jaw was on the floor. I'm like, this is amazing. Why are we not seeing, why am I not knowing about it more? And uh, so I binge watched, they sent me season one and uh, I binge watched the entire thing on my computer. I'd gotten no work done. Yeah. And I'm like, this is absolutely astounding. And uh, so shout out to BET for supporting you. What's the most fun um, in delivering this product? Laughter. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. We have so much fun on set. <laughs> it was his idea to put me in front of a live studio audience because uh -huh. I was a comedian. And that was the best thing ever because you can tell the difference between me on Thursday and Friday. I'm ready on Friday. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's, it's just so much. We laughed and we cha he changed the strips and we both come up with stuff. And, boy, we some days we'd be in there with tears rolling out there. You'd be like, cut, yeah. cut, cut. <laughs> Yeah, there was one there was one ad lib that you had she had been holding an ad lib for an episode all week and i thought it was the most disgusting ad lib ever <laughs> and she, <laughs> she i was like that no i was like it does not work she's like the audience gonna love it. the audience gonna love it so we get there <laughs> and the audience is there and she can't she's laughing before even saying it because she knows it's ridiculous <laughs> said, should i tell her what you said what did i say <laughs> you, you, <laughs> There was somebody, okay, so basically, <laughs> <laughs> basically, there was a threat. There was a huge threat to the family. <laughs> and so she said, everybody calm down. I will go take care of this. I will go spit this nigga booty hole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> but the audience fell out laughing. Wow. Like, what does that even mean? So, so I read an article. <laughs> In, in Chicago, they was having problems with the prisoners. They wasn't raping them. They were just spitting their booty holes, right? <laughs> and when they do that, they have to call their family and tell them that somebody else's DNA is in them. And I thought it was so funny. <laughs> I, I can't fathom it. I can't fathom it. <laughs> I couldn't even get it out. The audience was dying. They were like, what? What? It is his booty oh, hole. Man. All right. I'm not going to use that one, but I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just, it's just—it's like know. real life stuff like that, and it probably won't even make the cut. And we probably should be telling it in an interview, but it's, it's <laughs> stuff like that that just have us on the flow. We be screaming, oh, and the screaming. audience come back. We can only hold a hundred people, and they're around. I mean, they line up. We was at the point where we was turning away people oh, yeah. that they were so excited to yeah. come see the Miss Pat show. First time in Atlanta, Georgia, they ever did a, a, a live studio audience. Thanks to Jordan. They thought he was crazy when he was like, let's move to Atlanta with a live studio audience. Mm. But okay. again, the age different. I trusted him. Okay. Sometimes we have to have a new blood uh, around and uh, to keep us moving forward because we get stuck. And we might be afraid of our own selves and, and not. Um, what's the most satisfying? And uh, I want to thank you for your time. But our last question is, what's the most what's the most satisfying for you at this point about the show? Seeing, you know, for me, it took five years to get this show on, mm -hmm. on TV. And the most satisfying is with all the no's we went through and all the tears that I shed it and all the ups and downs to see it on TV, breaking the app, killing and nominated for an Emmy. Ain't nobody gonna ever tell me what I can't do. That's right. That's what right. Is, what is that and time I, for you? I, th I think it's that and it's also just, I'm, I'm a lover of sitcoms. I'm a lover of that old school form. So I'm so satisfied that, that we really are kind of putting a new version of that thing that we love out and that people are enjoying it and they're resonating. And there's so many people who, who feel like they can open themselves up and have conversations about their own lives and their own private situations because of the space that was made for the, because of the show. And so I just, I just, I'm just so grateful that, that people feel comfortable enough to share their stories like Pat sharing her story and, and really can find healing, even if they never step foot in a therapist's office, even if they should that they can still get somebody telling them that it's okay to talk about it. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for bringing all of my family members to your show and uh, <laughs> displaying them because that's real to life. It's an amazing job. Thank you so much. Congratulations and wish you much continued success. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. very much. All right.
Have a good one. All right, have a good one.